For today's video, we're gonna bust an RTX 3070's kneecaps and then have a good giggle to ourselves. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a mini PCIe, which is like a slot that most systems use for a Wi-Fi card, and then we're gonna adapt that into a PCI Express connector so that we can hook up an RTX 3070 to this all-in-one Samsung PC, which is going to be a very good deal for the Samsung PC and a very bad deal for the RTX 3070. Now, the reason that this is such a huge bottleneck for the RTX 3070 is because Mini PCIe only has one PCI Express lane in it, which is it's very little. But before we get into that, we have a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is a powerful and affordable Linux-based cloud computing service which is very easy to use. Linode has a large marketplace with fully configured one-click apps for whatever use case you need Linux-based web servers for, be it WordPress development and hosting, or if you need a file sharing solution, you can use File Cloud Community. If you have a database application, you can use PHP MyAdmin or MySQL MariaDB. They also have a variety of game server hosting options for you scrubs out there. And considering that we're currently mid scalpocalypse and physical hardware is very difficult to get your hands on, if you have heavy compute applications, Linode offers affordable options for that, be it CPU intensive, RAM intensive, or GPU intensive workloads. And when it comes to GPU compute loads, Linode's not messing around. They're using NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000 series GPUs for the max horsepower possible. If this sounds good to you, sign up using the link in my description below for a $100 60-day credit. For those of you that watched the first video where I upgraded this Samsung all-in-one to try and get the most performance out of it, you'll know that I made some mistakes trying to use that mini PCIe slot to adapt a graphics card to it, and I bought a new adapter that I thought was gonna work. Now luckily, a member of the Discord wrote a whole long explanation as to why my idea was terrible and it wasn't gonna work, and going even further than that, they suggested an idea that would work, which I very quickly accepted. I bought one of those adapters, and this is what happened. This adapter has some of the best promotional material on it I've ever seen. New Family Beast series, notebook performance promotion. The creation, infinite possibility. Unleash your power, create infinite possibilities. I mean, I feel like if this cooler doesn't turn me into the next monarch of Croatia, I'm gonna be disappointed. This adapter is actually really interesting. So you can see down here, it uses an HDMI out, which then converts into the mini PCIe beast connector over here. Now it's also got a port for supplemental power down here, which is really important because graphics cards do draw up to 75 watts from the PCI Express connector, right? So this way, uh, it can actually supply that power. And then you can see in there, there's some more beast branding. I was actually briefly concerned because this adapter doesn't have a clip at the front for that little little winglet on the PCI Express connector. But as you can see here, there's enough of an offset here so that it can actually snugly fit in there. Oh yeah, just a quick note on the specific RTX 3070 that we're using. It's that OEM version that I got out of the Dell XPS pre-built that we looked at a while ago. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll have it linked in the description below. So let's hook this all up and see what kind of performance we get from this OEM RTX 3070 into the all-in-one. Now the first concern is clearance, because as you can see here, this mini PCIe port is very low in the motherboard, and then there's this huge plastic hump here, which is in the way. But because it's a ribbon cable, I'm hoping that we should be okay. So slide that in there, push it down, and yes, it does actually clear, so we're good. Over here, we have the final setup, which does look a little bit janky, but I mean, that's kind of the point, right? So here, we have the supplemental power going into the adapter, so it uses this 8-pin uh, CPU power connector, and then this 24-pin adapter, I think, just trips the power to switch on the power supply when that needs some juice. And then here, we have the HDMI, which is coming from here into the adapter. And then, we're feeding the signal of the graphics card back 
into the actual all-in-one. So it means that we're still going to be using the display on it, uh, which is really useful. The fact that this has an HDMI in is awesome and it kind of makes this whole thing possible. Okay, let's see what happens when we fire this up. Oh, there we go. Okay, the graphics card switched on and it switched on the power supply and stuff, so that's good. Okay, so let's see here, because I think the source is on PC at the moment. Oh, no, okay. Oh, it's on, it's outputting via HDMI. So this is actually the graphics card signal that we're getting here. <laughs> now it's not running at native resolution because, well, we're gonna have to install graphics drivers. So give me a second to do that. So all I've done so far is install GeForce Experience and straight off the bat, we've got the RTX 3070 showing up. I haven't had to do anything. Uh, so let's just install newer drivers on the system and then we're gonna see how it runs games with that 1x PCIe lane. At this point, I'm still waiting for something to explode or just go wrong in some other fashion because like the driver is installed without a hitch. Everything has just worked up until this point, which is pretty unusual for one of my videos. I don't know, maybe it's because I wasn't the one that decided to buy that specific adapter that it's working. Uh, but yeah, so let's see what kind of gaming performance we get out of an RTX 3070 running through a single PCI Express lane. Now starting off with CSGO, um, yeah, we've got about 40 frames per second here going up and down a little bit. Now, this is definitely using the external GPU because considering the settings that we're using here, um, it's all high settings. And with just the iGPU on the 3770, we were getting worse results with low settings on everything. So yeah, it's definitely using the external graphics card, but we're averaging about 30 frames per second. <laughs> with an RTX 3070 in in CSGO. That's really amazing. You can see that the CPU is just at 12% utilization. Like there's not much going on in the system. It's weird that the graphics card is pegged at 98%, but I guess that that's just like all the bandwidth that's available for the graphics card. So it's not necessarily that the core is running at 100%. Now with all low settings, we've jumped up quite a lot. We're sitting at about 83, 83 to 90, 90 frames per second. But again, bear in mind that that's using an RTX 3070. <laughs> now we've hopped into GTA 5 with the same settings that I used for the iGPU system, just with one very big difference. This is at 1080p as opposed to the 720p we had to drop it to for the 3770 to run it with its iGPU. And this is significantly more playable. Um, but it's like the lowest settings for GTA 5 at 1080p. And we're averaging about, what is that? Like 70 frames per second? Yo, that graphics card is not doing anything. But I mean, that is a huge difference uh, when it comes to the actual gaming performance here. So now we're running Battlefield 5 at 1080p medium settings. Um, I mean, it's there's quite a lot of input lag. Like, it's you can feel that there's something weird going on here. Although, considering the fact that this system is getting about 60 frames per second-ish, is pretty impressive. And interestingly, while playing Battlefield 5, you can see here that the CPU utilization is significantly higher than it was with any of the other games. So that's interesting. It seems like this game is actually kind of evenly balancing the system despite that huge interface bottleneck that we have with the graphics card. So with that, let's do some quick comparative benchmarks to see how much of a difference that 3070 makes in this all-in-one's performance. So that was by far the easiest video process I've ever had. There were some instructions in the manual of the adapter on how to actually troubleshoot it and stuff, but I didn't need it. I just plugged it in and it worked. Again, it was probably because I wasn't the one that chose that adapter. Now the performance is significantly better than it was with just the iGPU, but obviously it was. I mean, you can fart in a bath and it would give you better gaming performance than that. But 
Obviously an RTX 3070 is stupid overkill and it's a massive bottleneck for that graphics card like it, it really wasn't doing much. Uh, although with Battlefield 5 the, the system was pretty evenly taxed there. So yeah, if you did something like this with a lower power GPU like a GTX 1650, I think it would give you a considerable performance boost and get you some more life out of the system. Granted that some games are going to have some input latency issues, but you know, it's it's not too bad. It's it's better than I was expecting. So with that, thank you very much for watching this fairly uneventful video. If you liked it, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.